What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR pod here at fakepigskin.com. Obviously, uh, it's another week. It's week eight. It's Brian Twining time. What's up, Brian? What's going on, Kyle? I am so excited to get into this week eight slate here as there are some interesting matchups to say the least, and all, as well as some really interesting lines to kind of d- dive into. Yeah, there's a lot to get into. Uh, my 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 picks this week um, are going to make a lot of people scratch their heads. They're really <laughs> gross numbers, but you know what? I love them. Give them to me. Uh, a quick recap before we head into week eight of week seven or whatever we, week college football was. Uh, Big Ten played their first game. Some teams are playing their sixth game. Literally nobody knows how, what week it is. Uh, interesting week for me. Uh, obviously, my be- best bet of Seattle, minus three and a half. Uh, did not cash. That game was a wild, wild ride. Um, I thought DK had won it until he did it. And then, you know, that game was back and forth. And then I thought, okay, here we go to overtime. Seattle is going to win by a six cover for your boy. Not so much. Uh, the Browns push because Cody Parkey doesn't know how to make a field goal, which is the point after um, in a game that was really weird. Um, Shout to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. They look, they look good. They kept pushing. Uh, the Bears Rams was probably my easiest under of the week. Uh, cash that relatively pain free. Uh, also, if you uh, follow me on Twitter, I, I threw at a little uh, Gerald Everett uh, to score a touchdown, which cash. That was a very nice little, nice little Monday night payday. Uh, Monday, right? That was Monday night. That was yeah. Sunday. Night? Okay, good. I'm these days i don't i don't know what day it is i don't know what's going on i just i just know there's games that i'm watching uh the saints panthers scored exactly 51 uh so my under pushed um let's see jacksonville had it until jacksonville did not have it and (laughs) and they lost by double digits so that's that was you know whatever um went two and two on my college uh north carolina covered with ease the sooners covered with ease ohio state let me down in a big way in the first half only to crush them in the second half and score a touchdown which ryan day had to apologize for for some reason uh I yeah i didn't understand that i was like uh, my first reaction so, even though i hate them is you better stop them if you don't want them to score when they have their backups in then right. you're you're well the thing i don't do get is okay so there's eight games so they're gonna get they want to get their guy experience but like their quarterback knew enough to score a touchdown, but didn't know how to take a knee. I, I, that, like, if you're not going to apologize, don't apologize. Don't do this half ass anyway. So, uh, let's see. On the year, I am 18 and 16, treading water, holding it down. Uh, my best bets are two and five. So, ignore my best bets or fade <laughs> me outright. Uh, you'd be five and two, uh, like Brian on his best bets. Uh, we can rip through. Uh, some of his stuff had the uh, under in Arizona, Seattle. That didn't work out so well for you. Uh, the Bills uh, minus 12 and a half. That was a wild ride. I took them live line minus <sighs> six and a half. Uh, and I was sweating that because all they could do is kick field goals for some reason. They have a big game this week against the Patriots, which I'm sure we'll dive into, um, which might have led to that. Uh, you had the Chargers minus seven and a half. That was a winner. You had the Packers minus three and a half. That was a winner. Uh, you went over in the Oklahoma state, not so much. You went over in Ohio state, not so much. Uh, the, uh, yeah. So, you know, you're doing much better. It wasn't the greatest week for you, but still 22 and 14, uh, hitting 60% of your bets. That is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, they call that, um, really good in Vegas. Um, and you're also five and two in your best bet. So, some nice production out of you. Uh, some okay production out of me. Um, still early. It's still real early. There's still lots to do. Lots to get into. Um, but before we dive into all of our games, make sure you mash that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Uh, we cleared 150 this week. We really appreciate everybody hopping on, joining the show, coming back for more content. If you're enjoying what we're doing, uh, let us know. Hit thumbs up subscribe all that good stuff uh as well as if you have your what is your best bet for the week let us know in the comments uh we're always looking for new edges looking for new ways to 
to to bet if you have something that you like let us know maybe we'll maybe we'll hop on and ride with you um we'll always we'll obviously give you a shout out next week if you if you hit some winners so let us know what you're what you're targeting today but brian let's go into our week eight picks uh against the spread and and let's start way, way we always do let's dive in we got a few games to get through we'll do our best the rest we'll do the college football minute which may or may not be a minute long uh give you our best bets and get out of here so Ravens Steelers opened at three and a half min minus three and a half for the Ravens. It's up to four. Uh, you are very uh, uh, bewildered by this line. Talk to me about about your expectations and and uh, why you're going to be backing the Steelers in a big way this week. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, we've talked about this at length before, and then g going into this COVID season uh, with with little fans or even no fans at these stadiums, the home field advantage that these teams would normally have, which is kind of in, uh, induces the three point line, isn't necessarily there. And when you're talking about an undefeated Steelers team who has basically dominated every game that they've played in while allowing some teams to kind of get back into it going up against a Ravens team who they've kind of been treading water. They Lamar Jackson is not the, the same guy that we saw last year with teams kind of forcing them to go down the field with the ball. Um, and their running game just hasn't, it hasn't really looked the same either as well as the, as good as the Ravens defense has been, they do have some holes, you know, going deep, which is, you, you know, Pittsburgh is going to want to take those shots down the field, and, you know, and you kind of expect these AFC North, which has taken over for the NFC North as the black and blue division games to be extremely tight, extremely close, come down to a field goal. So in these matchups, I always lean the team that's getting the points. And when it's anything over three, I will always back the team getting getting the field goal and a half. I hear you. I, I I am a hundred percent in in terms of what you what you're saying. That being said, Ravens minus four, I'm I'm all over it. Um, <laughs> this gate that line screams to me. Hey hey Joe Public, come bet me, come bet me, come get this undefeated team for you're getting four points. Like how are you gonna lose? There's no way you're gonna lose. Come get it. Uh, this is a Lamar Jackson coming out party. The Ravens play really well here. Uh, Maybe we see a J.K. Dobbins 130 yards, two touchdown performance here. I'm all for that. Don't worry. Um, the Ravens play well. They they dominate and win this game by at least six. I'm thinking like 23-17. Uh, maybe a little ugly. Maybe a little gross. But Hollywood Brown scores. J.K. Dobbins scores at least once, maybe twice. Um, yeah, 23-17, 24-17, 28 21 something like that i don't know i but uh baltimore wins baltimore covers and uh the list of unbeatens is shortened but you know what brian you cashed your ticket so you don't have anything to worry about there that's right i could care less if pittsburgh loses now so i'm uh... yep and i know we've been the pittsburgh sealers podcast and for the right reasons but I, I i did see a lot of stuff last week that 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 concerned me a little bit um, and the fact that, that my Titans couldn't get that that game tying field goal uh, was incredibly frustrating. But they let teams hang around, as you mentioned, and uh, maybe that bites them this week. Uh, let's stay in the division, sort of, and talk about my team, sort of. Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati Bengals versus Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Bengals are home hosting the Titans as five and a half point underdogs. Um, where's your head at for this one? So this line, I think it opened up as as five or or just around where where the line is right now. Um, you know, it to me, I I'm leaning, I'm leaning Tennessee in this game. I I know they 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 suffered their first loss last week, but that is to the best team in the NFL currently in the Pittsburgh Steelers. And mm -hmm. the fact that Cincinnati's rush defense is atrocious, I just expect this to be the the monster monster Derrick Henry game that we've been expecting where he's going to see anywhere from 25 to 30 carries probably over possibly over two bills maybe the maybe this is the week where we bet the three touchdown game for Derrick Henry and the fact that they I know Joe Burrow is balling out right now but a lot of that is while they're trailing and 
I don't expect that to stop. Like I, I expect to see Joe Burrow continue to air it out, get close to those 300 yard games every week, but going up against this Titans team that knows how to control the clock against teams with, with poor defenses. I just think that Tennessee is going to be up early in this one and just dominate this game from start to finish. I like the Bengals. I like the Bengals plus five and a half. I think their offense is Woo! good enough to to hang around in this game. I like you mentioned. Uh, I expect to see a lot of Derrick Henry. I think the I think the Titans control it. I think it's a comfortable win, but I think it's a three or four point win at the end of the game. And I think that means. So I think I think this point this line is a point or two too high. Uh, we've seen Houston, who is awful uh go toe-to-toe and force the titans to win in overtime which they ended up covering so good on them uh we saw you know them be exposed a little bit last week by the steelers uh we'll see if mixon's back for this one um but the running game can get at tennessee and and their secondary has been incredibly uh incredibly resilient when they got when they get in the red zone but between the 20s they can move at will Um, and it's a little concerning for me as a Titans fan that sees Kansas city and expects a AFC championship redo. Uh, and I'm not sure how much different it's going to be if they perform that well. Now, that being said, could the Titans win 37 to seven here and absolutely dominate for four quarters. And this game is not that close. Uh, absolutely. And, and if the Titans are as good as I hope, and as I, I expect them to potentially be, they should probably do that, but I'm not. I'm not optimistic, and, and if I'm betting this game, uh, I'm taking those points with the home team. And as you mentioned, granted, it's not. There's not as many fans or any fans in in a lot of these stadiums, but this should be a Titans plus three, Titans plus four at most. Um, the fact that I'm getting five and a half, I, I have to. I have to side with the home team. Oh, give me the give me the roadies in this one in the, these first two for sure. Brian likes the road sodas. That never works well. Uh, <laughs> let's go stay in the division. Talk about a really really interesting game. Uh, your your boy Baker Mayfield, uh, home for the Raiders of Las Vegas. Um, I think both of these teams are incredibly compelling. I think both have a real shot as a dark horse. You know, one of the last one or two playoff teams, um, I think their offenses have both been interesting. I like Derek Carr quite a bit from a fantasy perspective down the stretch. I like Baker, obviously. Um, the Browns are home, uh, two and a half point under or two and a half point favorites, which and maybe, you know, and, and it is interesting, Brian, because as we've talked, you know, there's not, you know, quote unquote, a home field as typical years. So you know, if if we had a home crowd, would this line be three and a half or would it just be two and a half? And now we're getting the Raiders coming here with no crowd. And maybe we should side with side with the road team, even though, um, you know, at first glance, maybe the home team makes sense getting less than three. I guess this is the week we're on the traveling man because this is another game where I like the road team in this one because the Raiders I think are just kind of flying under the radar as you mm. kind of like you alluded to they they've played a lot better than than the losses would indicate and I, I yeah. last week against Tampa Bay Tampa Bay ran away with the game late late mm-hmm. in that one yeah, it, but it, it, it was, was close for yeah it was 24 20 in the fourth quarter like that game was competitive for three and a half quarters and i think the most important fact about that w- being so close was the limited ability of of the raiders to get their ground game going josh jacobs was completely held in check he had 17 yards on 10 carries or whatever it was and they were still able to stay in this with what might pot- potentially be the best team in the NFC right now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we've already seen Las Vegas go and beat the Kansas City Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champion. And now they're going up against the Cleveland team, which, yes, they balled out last week. Baker Mayfield looked every bit the part of the number one pick in the draft. But I'm still not sold on Baker and this team. And it, you've seen their running game for – at. As much as we thought that they were just going to be able to pick up where they left off with Nick Chubb's injury with the running game, Chubb hasn't he hasn't eclipsed 100. I mean, uh, 
Green Hunt Mountain. hasn't 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 eclipsed 100 yards yet. This running attack is not the same minus Chubb's ability to make the first guy miss, get into that hole really fast. And it, Mayfield's also not throwing to Hunt as much as we would expect with Kareem seeing, you know, 70 to 80% of these snaps. And now minus Odell Beckham Jr., I know Rashad Higgins and Donovan Peoples Jones and there's late talk about Cordero Hodge coming off the IR you know, people are excited about them in a fantasy aspect when you're, but when you're looking at real life football here, they're going to be going up against a Raiders team who is going to have potentially their entire offensive line back. The yeah. rate, the Browns have been pretty, they've been middle of the road to bad against the run on defense, the Raiders and Derek Carr. Like we've been saying, Derek Carr is surprising some people and showing why he is a franchise quarterback this year. Henry Ruggs is healthy. Darren Waller is a mid, matchup nightmare mm -hmm. i think the raiders are one of the best and most under talked about team in the nfl and i think getting the two and a half here i i'm taking them money line i like the raiders to win this game in cleveland yeah i think if you like the raiders here you take them on the money line i think that's the, the smart play um it's going to come for me if this game is the running game. Can the Raiders get Josh Jacobs going? If they can, they can absolutely win this game. If they can't, uh, I like Cleveland quite a bit. I'm looking kind of at the at the rushing production outside of the Steelers game in week six. Uh, no running back has gotten really over 55 yards. Obviously, your Cowboys, uh, Zeke at 54 Pollard had 16, <laughs> uh, but that was a game that got lopsided real quick. So they were throwing a lot. Uh, they have allowed a lot of rushing touchdowns. One, two, three, four, five, six on this season. Uh, but yeah, if 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 Cleveland and Miles Garrett in that defense can slow down Josh Jacobs and get havoc on Derek Carr, I think they do. Um, and I think they will this week, even though, you know, as you mentioned, the, the line does get back. I think this is a good game. I think it's a competitive game, but I think the Browns win by three or more. And if I'm getting under three with the home team, I'm absolutely taking it. Uh, but, you know, it's fun going head to head. You you will call you road soda. You'll be the road road dog. Jesse James. Yeah. Uh, Degeneration X. Degeneration uh, X, baby. But uh, yeah, you know, I'll, we'll go head to head a little bit. I think I think that that makes things more fun. But yeah, uh, I like I like me the I like me the home team, um, and and Baker is dancing his way into the bye with a six and two record. Um, pretty nice for for the Browns. And you know, we talked. Uh, it's funny, Brian. We're both big Steeler guys coming into the year. We thought maybe there was a potential in this division for someone else to win it besides Baltimore. Um, and you know, a lot of that's coming to fruition, which is really interesting. I think this is going to be, be one of the most compelling, uh, races towards the end as the Steelers, Ravens and Browns all appear to be, uh, highly competitive and, um, even Cleveland or even Cincinnati is making things interesting. So, um, this is a, a really tough division. I think adding that extra spot could open up uh, a potential for all three of the, the top teams to make it. Uh, let's talk about what. Pop, probably going to be my favorite game of the whole Sunday slate. That is the Seattle Seahawks hosting the San Francisco 49ers. Um, this is a game. I, I was at the, the, the NFC championship, uh, uh Kaepernick the failed attempt to crab tree, uh, Ooh. being in that stadium in the link, um, is a, is a very unique experience. Something that, uh, any sports fan, especially a big playoff game against a division rival, uh, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, taking advantage of that if you can. That being said, there's no fans here. This is a, this is a Seattle defense that is atrocious. They're the uh, worst in the NFL and on pace to shatter the NFL record for yards against. Kirk Cousins gets a blit, you know, lit lights them up. Kyler Murray lights them up. Uh, now Jimmy Garoppolo goes in as a three-point underdog. Uh, this offense is missing pieces, obviously, but they seem to be getting healthy in the right places. They have a great defense. They can get pressure on the quarterback. Um, I mean, I guess, where do you, how do you see this paying out? Because obviously these are two division rivals that play really tough games, You typically not super-duper high-scoring, but... Uh, but these are kind of different, like Russell Wilson throwing a hell of a lot more than we've ever seen. That defense is nowhere near. Uh, the over-under is 54. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't seem to be getting a lot of love as a fantasy option this week, which 
I, I think is kind of interesting. And maybe, um, you know, as I look towards uh, DraftKings on Sunday, might be a guy, you know, a little a little Jimmy Garoppolo, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk stack could be real, real nice if, if people are going to fade him. Um, and then on the money line, my uh, those Niners are plus 130, plus 135, um, uh, which is also incredibly compelling. But where are you at with this game and, and kind of your expectations? Well, to continue the trend, this is another game where... Road you know, dog! Yeah, I am the road dog this week. It, it, when I saw that that field goal, and I'm, I'm hoping it goes up to a field goal and a half, yeah. I absolutely love San Francisco. I mean, we're just kind of discounting how good that they've played over the last couple of weeks, even with the rash of injuries that they've had. Yeah. Jason Ferret is looking like the guy that the Chargers thought he was going to be on the outside yep. there. He's completely shutting down opposing receivers. I'm not saying that's going to happen against Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf because those two dudes are not even human, but you know, it Seattle is dealing with so many injuries in the backfield. They may have DJ Dallas back there as their starting running back, which I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe he comes in and he's, he's, he's well worth their starting role, but you know, I, and, and San Francisco's offense has been just rolling the last couple of weeks with all those pieces out. They're just plugging guys in. Kyle Huszczyk is getting carries finally. He had three carries last week, something we'd never seen with him. They're using yeah. him in the passing game. George Kittle is healthy. Brandon Ayuk is looking like a clone of Debo Samuel. Jimmy Garoppolo played so much better against the New England defense, who even minus some of their pieces have still considered one of the tops in the NFL this year, and yep. they absolutely destroyed them on the ground. Um, you know, I, I love San Francisco with the points, as long as it stays at three or above, I mm -hmm. I'm all over the Niners, but if it, if it creeps under that three mark, I do like the ability of Seattle to normally win those extremely tight, close games, especially in the confines of their own home, even without the 12th man. Yeah. And it's plus three minus 110, 115. Uh, it's two and a half at, at one or two spots. If, like you said, if it gets under three, I'm just not going to bet it. But if it's three or above, I'm I'm looking at the Niners. I'm looking at that money line. And I'm looking at the over because, as you mentioned, Carlos Hyde, we'll see. But even if he is healthy and plays this game, that Niners defense has been so damn good against the rush. That I think there's a lot of Russell Wilson throwing. I think they're going to be productive even with the improvements in the secondary. I think that means... Jimmy Garoppolo and company are throwing. And I think that means this is a high scoring game. I, I like the over at 54. Um, if I can get it anything under, I think 55, 55 and a half, I'd be willing to take. If it starts to trickle above that, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not expecting another 60 point shootout like we saw last week. Uh, but I think there's enough there between the two teams to score, you know, at least 54, 55 points. And that, that 54 is a huge key number. Obviously, you know, with more two points and stuff that, 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 you know, a, a little, little less, like it used to be way more key, but now, now it's still incredibly compelling. Um, so yeah, I like the Niners. I like the over, um, and, and we can go simpatico on that one. Best of the rest. Uh, we have some interesting games on the card of the games we haven't mentioned. Is there anything that jumps off the page to you? Uh, you know, I, the, the matchup in the AFC East, this could be the kind of like handing over of the, of the division between the Patriots and the bills, uh, new mm. England going into Buffalo, just riddled, riddled with injuries with news of Julian Edelman. Now going to miss a couple games with a knee scope. Stefan Gilmore was on the injury the injured list today, missing practice. Uh, this, this Patriots team is rumors of them just, you know, selling the ship at the trade deadline. It, this is Buffalo's opportunity to finally take over as the, the cream of the crop in that division. And, you know, it's a, it's a four point line right now. I'd be interested to see what the way it moves going into Sunday. I'm kind of yeah. expecting it to go up slightly, which I'd probably lean new England because it just like we had talked pre-show and it, Every time you expect the Patriots or Bill Belichick to kind of, you know, be be beaten, they always come up with some weird plan to either keep it close or wind up winning these games that, that we're not expecting them. So I think that's probably my like my favorite under the radar matchup. Yeah, I I like that game quite a bit. 
Um, I think if I'm betting it and I like New England, I'm taking them on the money line. I think they could win win the game outright. I think this game's either like 27 to 3 blowout. This is our division now. Josh Allen, you know, stamps his, his name as the next kind of guy to own this division. Uh, or or New England wins and and they remind the Bills that they're still the little brother and they have to go <laughs> through them before they can before they can get the win. Mm. Uh, a few interesting games. Obviously, the Jets are getting uh, 19 and a half um, at in Kansas City. Uh, well, I <sighs> that that game is so tough, man. Uh, e- e- either way, well, however you think that game shakes out, we're both going to be on Le'Veon Bell anytime touchdown. Um, that is a uh, I haven't seen the line yet, but that is a smash play this week um, for sure. Yeah, especially in a game where where the offense has the ability to and no lines yet. We'll we'll probably address that Sunday morning. Um, but look for it. I also, uh, in, in terms of an anytime touchdown, if you're looking for for some fun, uh, Melvin Gordon anytime touchdown, and I, I don't hate parlaying them together. Uh, Brian's not quite as optimistic about that. But that game could be 37 to seven with Melvin Gordon scoring the only touchdown, and uh, <laughs> him him being him being really excited about that. Uh, Detroit Indy is really interesting. I think, you know, Brian. I'm not as optimistic about Indy as I was heading into the season. And I feel like this is a team that could be, there's been, there's been times where a team has started really hot and been five and zero or six and one or seven and two, whatever it is. And then finish seven and nine or eight and eight. And I think Indy has a very good chance of being that team this year. I've, uh, I guess, I guess I've taken over your your optimism for this Colts team because it's another it's another road team that um, I'm all over this week. I think that line is it's it's just about right for the Colts. They're they're getting healthy on the defensive side of the ball. They're, all their linebackers are back. Darius Leonard is going to be back, mm-hmm. which is going to be a crucial part of yeah. that defense. Um, Detroit they should have lost last week to the Atlanta Falcons, who are possibly the worst team in the nfl right now they're I mean, such a mess they can't they 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 remind me of my fantasy season thus far the <laughs> the the places where you want them where they're like they're actively trying to win they can't win when they have a lead they can't not they can't like not score a touchdown and then yep. blow the game like it's just like they can't get out of their own way um and and i'm curious you know obviously we're recording this on Thursday night. So I'm curious to see how tonight's game against Carolina goes. Um, and then your Cowboys, man, we could talk about that too. Uh, double digit, <laughs> double digit underdogs uh, against Philly. Um, I hope you got the line at four and a half when it first opened, because I saw that and I was like, I jumped yeah. all over that bad boy. Uh, middling that game is like, that is get the Eagles minus at four, four and a half, and then get the Cowboys at 10 and, and love life. Uh, oh, yeah. b- before we jump into our cards, before we jump into uh, our best bet for all that stuff, let's do our college football minute, which may or may not be a minute long. Uh, Brian, obviously last week with the big 10 game going, we, we decided to get a little more aggressive with our college talk. Um, what are we looking at this week? What games do you like? So I'm I'm gonna do what I said I would never really do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be placing a wager on my Michigan Wolverine game, but it's not it's not a line. I'm gonna go with the Michigan State team total under 14 and a half. That they're just crap. Let's just say that. They're they're back to being the little brothers of the of the state, the Spartans over there. Michigan looked really good and upsetting one of your favorite picks of the week last weekend against Minnesota. Yeah, um, Michi- Michigan's offense. Michigan's offense looks like they finally got a quarterback that can play the style that they want to do. And yep. while they're running the ball, they can run play action off of that. Um, Michigan State, I believe they just lost this last weekend at home. It, it. I'm just, I'm just thinking this is a complete a complete domination by Michigan. And this game is over midway through the third quarter. 
Uh, I'm all over Michigan State this week. I will take those 24 points. Thank you very much. Uh, this would be the second time under Jim Harbaugh that the Wolverines are favored by 24 points uh, over Michigan State. The last time was 2016 when Michigan beat Michigan State 32-23. Uh, a, a few. I'm gonna. I'm gonna steal a few nuggets from from the bear over at ESPN because he he is the researcher extraordinaire and and has some fascinating nuggets uh, for college football. Highly recommend checking out his stuff each and every week. That being said, uh, I already locked in. I took 24 and a half just to give myself a little extra. Uh, Michigan got a lot of really nice spots last week. They they were starting the ball in midfield. I think this is an ugly game. I think it's a sloppy game. I think Michigan wins. I think Michigan plays fine. But I think Michigan State does enough, even if it means going under that team total, uh, to cover the 24 points this week. Uh, I like West Virginia a lot. Um, I, I think this is a fantastic spot for him. Um, I am taking them minus the three and a half. Uh, basically, Kansas State is somehow a top 15 team, even though they aren't good. And, uh, it, and it's just a lot of like a messy season. Um, it, it, okay, so the, dating back to 2017, there have been 13 instances of a team ranked outside the top 15 as an underdog of four points or less versus a road team uh, or on the road versus an unranked team, which is what we got here. Those those 13 teams are 2-11 and 11 straight up uh, and against the spread. Kansas State, fade them, take West Virginia, thank me later. Uh, I like under, I like Auburn this week on the money line on the I, field versus LSU, uh, over the past five years as a home underdog, uh, they, they beat Alabama. They beat, they lost to Georgia by seven. They beat Alabama. They beat Georgia. They beat LSU and they lost to Clemson. So what's that like five and two straight up? Um, I, don't LSU is not good. LSU no. is figuring figuring stuff out. Somehow they're favored on the road. Um, that defense is Auburn's bad. not good. Auburn's figuring stuff out. Uh, uh, they could be making some coaching changes. Uh, the quarterback hasn't evolved like many thought they might. Uh, it's going to be a gross game, but I think Auburn wins at home. I think they cover. Um, and I think they went on the field and I, I will be taking them plus the 115, 120, 125, whatever you can get. Um, and I like Georgia a lot. Seven, they're, they're, they're 17 point uh, under or 17 point favorites against Kentucky at Kentucky. Kentucky's on their backup quarterback. Uh, <laughs> Kentucky's got some stuff that you like, but Georgia's pissed uh, after basically being good for th two and a half quarters against Alabama and end up getting shut out, end up getting rolled, uh, end up not looking good. Obviously, you know, took time to figure it out, got everything together. This is still a really, really good Georgia team. I like them. And you know what? Ohio State, minus whatever, give it to me. They're, <laughs> they're rolling. They're killing Penn State. Uh, James Franklin did not see this coming. Um, obviously I I'd much rather this game was off of a win against Indiana instead of a loss against Indiana. Uh, but I still like Ohio state. I think Ohio state is the class of the big 10 and I don't think it's relatively close. Um, uh, I think they're a playoff team. I think they're a national championship team. And I don't think anyone else in the division, uh, is unless Michigan decides to, that they, they want to get their shit together and, and meet us the, um, you know, in the big 10 championship kind of class but i don't i don't know if that's they're ready for that so uh that is where i'm at with my college football plays anything ju else jump out to you that i did not mention oh yeah so i'm gonna go out to the west coast out here and one of my favorite lines is byu minus 29 going up against western kentucky this is a western kentucky team who's two and four uh, they've lost to Marshall, UAB, Liberty, Louisville. They've yeah. been averaging somewhere in between like 17 and 18 points on the year while giving up any, close to about 30, going up against a BYU team who has been absolutely crushing their opponents with Zach Wilson looking like a potential first-round pick over there as yeah. a quarterback. They've been putting up 50 points on multiple opponents. I think BYU absolutely destroys them. And yep, then the I other like line I'm looking quite at a bit. Uh, Zach is, Wilson's uh, made a huge step, and this ain't yeah. your grandpa's BYU. This is a team no. that likes to score early and often. 
Yes. And then the, the other game is right, right here in my own backyard is San Diego state, a seven and a half point favorite this weekend. I think this Aztecs team has the, has the makings of being that group of five team to get into the BCS bowls as this defense is looking every bit as good as it's been over the last you know, decade or so when it was under Rocky Long and now back to Brady Hoke. And this offense, they have a quarterback that they really like. They're able to run a more pro-style system. They got a good running game going. They have good good receivers on the outside. So I really like the Aztecs to kind of put their foot down and really show the nation that they're ready to be that group of five team and take over for Boise State out of the Mountain West Conference. I'm with you on San Diego State, and in fact, I'm going to parlay that with the under. I love San Diego State unders. It's Rocky Long. It's Brady Hoke. I don't care who it is. They, <laughs> give me the under. Give me ugly. Give me gross, and give me a, a San Diego State cover plus the under. I, I like that call quite a bit. Uh, all right, Brian. Are you ready to do this? We we can hit our a uh, week eight recap, uh, run through what's on our card, obviously, uh, join us Sunday morning on the live stream. We help you with your fantasy lineups. We talk through our betting card for the week. Uh, we update anything there. Uh, we get you set for your bets, for your fantasy matchups, for your DFS, uh, all that good stuff. So, Brian, let's run through it. Let's talk our week eight recap, and then we'll hit our week eight best bet. All right, so this is going to be a fairly large ticket for me this week, but I'm yeah, going to go. My, I'm very overextended this week, which either is going to be great or <laughs> it's going to be terrible. I haven't decided. Yeah, so I'm taking the Michigan State team total under under 14 and a half. I like BYU minus 29, San Diego State minus seven and a half. Those are my college my college lines this weekend. And then going into the NFL. My favorite bet of the week. I'm not going to make it my best bet just because I feel like it's too easy, but that's going to be Le'Veon Bell anytime touchdown. We don't have the line yet, but whether it's plus 5,000 or minus 600. Yeah, it I'll should be plus 600. money, but I wouldn't expect much over like, like plus 120, 130 is kind of what my expectations would be. Yeah, so like Le'Veon Bell anytime touchdown, I absolutely love. We're going back to the well. Jets team total under 14 and a half. They just, they're just bad. They suck. Um, I love the Steelers with the three and a half. Give me Tennessee laying the six on the road in Cincinnati. Give me but the Raiders Steelers, money Steel, line. It, it's Steelers plus. Well, you get actually you get you get. We'll do. We'll, we're gonna call it four because that's what it is. So you'll get you get you get an extra half point. Congratulations. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So Steelers plus four. Give me the Raiders money line on the road in Cleveland. And I think. For the last game that I'm going to add to my ticket, I'm going to do, I'm going to take Philly minus nine and a half against my bad Cowboys. I just think that the Eagles will completely bury my team and maybe Jerry Jones will finally do what is needed and s rebuild the team, sell off some pieces and let's start from scratch. Not happening. Not happening. One, one, one iota. Uh, all right, you ready for this? It's really gross, but I love every minute of it. Michigan State plus 24. And a half. The Georgia Bulldogs minus 17. Auburn money line on the field. Give it to me. Uh, San Diego State under 43 and a half on the NFL card. The Ravens minus four. The Jets plus 19 and a half. The Bengals plus five and a half. The Browns minus two and a half. Your Dallas Cowboys plus <laughs> nine and a half. And the Saints bears under 43 and a half. Those are your winners. That's how you make money this week. Uh, Brian, it's the almighty best bet time. Who you got? Where's your money going? Where if you had to make one and only one bet this week, besides Levy on Bell to score a touchdown, because I'm a hundo P with you right there. I got Levy on Bell. I got Melvin Gordon for two touchdowns. I might have some more player props on Sunday morning. So make sure you check in on that. But what is your week eight best bet? My week eight best bet is I'm going to stick in the AFC North and I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers money line on the road in Baltimore plus 170. Give me that money, baby. Enjoy your losses, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy your losses. Um, You know what? Let's do it. Baltimore Ravens minus four best bet 
That's your winner. Steelers lose. Steelers don't cover. And there is no more undefeated teams in this here NFL. That, that would kill my ticket. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's do it. I'm, I love going heads up. I, lo- I love to see where this is going to end up. Uh, and maybe we can, between now and Sunday morning, figure out some sort of payoff for this head-to-head matchup. I think I think we could find some shenanigans for, for the next episode. So make sure you tune in live Sunday morning. Bring your fantasy questions. Bring your betting questions. Uh, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. Uh, for Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to you.